from Poland project, from Warsaw in Poland. Today we're going to entertain you by building and running some software on WebAssembly and on the Golem infrastructure. Can I have a quick show of hands in the room? I mean, we have guests here. How many of you are either current or former software developers, like coders? Hey, this workshop is for you guys. Um, do you remember how you all started? Do you remember how you started coding? How you felt compelled and excited to touch the keyboard to write a computer program? I remember when I started, I was eight by then. And I wanted to write a computer game on my 8-bit Commodore. So I picked... Uh, one to eight. <laughs> I picked a, a book on BASIC and, and I just started writing simple if-then statements. And I ended up with like a text-based computer game. And that, it, it worked and I felt the thrill for the first time. Years later, I picked up C language, which um, felt so professional to me. And I had to learn new syntax with the, the braces and you know, curly brackets. And it was, you know, it had a compiler, and I could like compile the exe file. That was so exciting. And every time, years later, when I was picking all the other languages I, I, I was learning, I felt the same thrill. Um, I mean, I'm almost 40 now, and I started learning Rust language last year, and I again felt the same excitement with the new syntax and new tool sets, being able to build something that, that actually works. I'm saying all this because we hope to be able to replace some of the, this, this excitement with you guys here, playing with WebAssembly and Golem. So, WebAssembly. WebAssembly essentially is language for the web. Is that clever or what? Um, but seriously, it is a programming platform, like the native programming platform for the web. That's how it's sold, how it's, how it's called. It's goes with near native performance. It comes with a compact binary format to distribute your software. It can be compiled from any language, that, that's the concept of it. Um, today we're going, to be, we're going to be showing Rust language, and it goes with one of the best supports for WebAssembly compilation, but uh, you're able to compile from C, C++, from Go, and other languages as well. I mean, I even heard of a C Sharp compiler. It is portable, so multiple platforms. It comes with a sandboxing model, which is very similar to JavaScript. And funnily enough, it's also very similar to JavaScript in other aspects. I mean, just like JavaScript broke out of the web browsers, uh, I mean, look what happened with Node.js. In the same way, WebAssembly doesn't need to be run in the browser. It can be run on like proper server-side backend uh, manner. And this is what we are going to be demonstrating and playing with today on Golem. And over the on, on Golem itself. Uh, Golem is a, is a concept. It's a concept of a distributed, decentralized marketplace for computing power. So in, um, essentially, you're able to share your computing power with others on your, um, on your peer to peer network. What's important and convenient for us here is that since last release, it supports the WebAssembly um, you know, running. Uh, we call it the GWASM model. And What's also convenient for us today is that Golem has a lightweight or sort of lightweight version which is called Golem Unlimited, which is rid of the economy layer and it's meant for the trusted environments um, such as the one you'll be seeing here today. And it also supports the GWASM modules. So, that's what we're going to play with today. But before we begin, let's set ourselves in the mood. Can we just dim the lights a little bit, please? Okay. So imagine we are not in 2019. We are here in Osaka in 2077, and we are at war. We are the crypto resistance, defending the free world from the oppression of the corrupt, crooked corporate syndicates. To exchange the ideas, 
we celebrate our annual secret conference of the society's greatest visionaries and thinkers. A true gathering of free minds and free wills such as this is an obvious threat to the syndicates. We've learned that our conference has been compromised and we are likely to become a target for attack. We expect long-range cruising missiles to be launched from the private islands in the Pacific Ocean, but we are not defenseless. Our wits, our technology are the ultimate defense. Join us today, join the network, leverage the computing power, so that together we can outsmart the enemy and make a step towards a more balanced civilization. Who's with us today? Who's joining us today? Hey! Guys, you may want to grab your bandanas, the crypto resistant bandanas. Those of you who want to join the workshop, like the hands on coding workshop, you're welcome to join the uh, network that we've set up for you. We have prepared a safe training bootcamp environment. We have a local network with there's a Wi Fi, there's LAN cables. LANs are going to be more stable than the Wi Fi. Um, join the network, open the URL which is listed there, and it takes you to the landing page of the, um, of the workshop. By the way, this landing page is also available online, like from the internet, so you're, you're happy to repeat those exercises with all the materials in your, in your own time. Those of you who <coughs> want, we have pen drives here with all the content, all the binaries, so we will grab this and maybe quicker to download to, to, to install to set up. So the plan for today is we will set up the Golem Unlimited cluster. Um, so we have a Golem hub prepared for you and you will be able to connect to the hub so that you can participate in the distributed computation on WebAssembly. Those of you who don't want to take a coding session are happy to sit back and relax, but you can compile and sort of run the golden provider part to join the network so that your PC is actually hosting the computation. <coughs> Those of you who want to take part, please download the Docker image and that contains the full development environment that is required for the session today. That session will be played by my colleague here on the screen, so we are happy to follow. Rule of thumb, if you are having trouble connecting, if you are having trouble um, running the exercises, just raise your hand for quietly, someone from the staff will try to help you, try to unlock you, okay? I think we are all set for the GU cluster. I have a colleague here who will take us to the process. Good one, Sam. Hey, Dozo. Um, I hope you guys don't mind if I sit down. Um, I didn't really sleep last night. <laughs> so, um, I bet all of you have problems as well. Um, so very briefly, uh, as was shown on the screen, for those of you who are following us, we have prepared a website for you guys. It's devcom.golem.network and you will find pretty much everything that we're going to cover today here. Is there? Down there? Down there. Sorry, yeah. so you're going to find everything we're going to talk about here in there today, right? Um, that includes the tutorial. Now, the tutorial has got quite a bit of text, so you might not want to follow it now, uh, but feel free to do this, like we play it yourself at home. Um, hopefully, you guys are going to have fun with it. Now, for today's session, I advise you to do the workshop cheat sheet. It's got copy and paste instructions, essentially, so if you ever get lost, uh, just you know, copy and paste, and you're gonna, you should be back on track. Um, first things first, for those of you who are trying to join us, um, the instruction is in, I'm sure in the tutorial, I think. Great. So, um, is it the where is it going? Where is it going? Right. So, um, in the tutorial, so that section number one is going to go on the cluster. So, have you guys actually done it? Yeah. Have you tried doing it? No. Yes. 
Right, okay, so if you go to our web page that's devcon.net.network and then forward slash um, tutorial, please follow, so basically for your um, post, be the Mac or Linux, get yourself the installation package and run it if you can. For those of you who cook the tablets, well, you can try, I'm not sure if it work, but um, oh, for those of you who have Windows Surface, it actually might. Okay, does it make sense? Cool. So, what's going to happen then? You should see um, <coughs> like an icon in your um, tray. So, I, I've got a map here, so you see on the screen. Sorry, I can't, I don't think I can make it bigger. Um, it should be in the top right corner, for the icon there, right? Um, and then if you click configure, you want to connect with app.dollin and give it, you can give it sample to access, it doesn't really matter. Um, we're not going to be running anything bad here. Okay? Um, and as you will be connecting here, we're going to see you guys here. And that's, um, if you go to hub, with a port number of 61622 61, and then forward slash app forward slash index HTML, you should see the computer joining. Um, Did you make the font a bit bigger on this? Yeah, I, I don't think I can. Apple Plus? It's an Apple Plus. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so these are all the PCs and Macs. I'm actually both. I haven't seen Windows here. Um, so Linux is and Max we're going to connect the cluster here locally. So this is everything run here on the local network. And we're going to use this cluster to actually upload computations later on. Um, and it's very easy to set up. We've got the installers, as I mentioned, on the tutorial web page. So you can actually, if you fancy, you can actually do it yourself later on as well. You can actually set up your own cluster to um, do some fancy stuff that we're going to mention later on. What is, what is probably also important is that the packages, the install packages with FTP compared, they do contain the WASM awesome runtime. So they do contain the WebAssembly sort of backend, uh, and we will run the WebAssembly modules that we will write, build and write, on those, on those uh, hosts, on those nodes. So essentially what we'll be presenting is we'll present the running of our software or the software that we build on the distributed network somewhere on your PC. Yeah. Anyone succeeded connecting? Yeah. Excellent. Anyone else? Hey, do you see yourself up there? Yeah, I was trying to. But... <laughs> it's here. It seems it doesn't Does anybody need help? Is talking to Docker? No, 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 the provider? Is it, are you on the cable okay, or Wi-Fi? Oh, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is like, they got like 15 different networks here and they all compete with each other, so Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi is bad, so if you can drop a cable, just drop a cable. Does anybody else need help with starting the tube provider? Oh, 
No, but I want to check your ID and follow the ID. Okay, guys. Um, All right, so I mean, the cluster is quite numerous here. Um, there's enough of us to start practicing. Yeah? Okay, ready to do some building, ready to do some building. Yeah. Right, guys. Okay, so, um, so if, if you go to cheat sheet, we're going to start with A1. Um, or, so large, make larger. If I, go, if I make it any, any larger. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hang on. There we go. Right. So hopefully you guys got the Docker image pulled. Uh, I think you can you can get it off the USB drive. Right? USB yes. Drive. Yes. So the the uh, comment for loading from the USB stick is like on the whiteboard. Ah, uh, whiteboard. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. Thank you. Docker log minus e minus minus i. Right. So I assume that you already got the Docker. If you don't, please do it now. Now, um, we're going to create, I already did it, so I'm not going to go through those steps, but create like a, a dummy workspace, we're going to use it to actually um, map uh, a folder on the Docker in your post, and we can actually browse the results because we don't have it. We actually pretty much don't have anything on the Docker except for the stuff that you need, so you can't really put it much in there. Uh, it's a pain in the ass if you actually want to compile it there, it actually takes a long time, um, especially if you don't have a lot of without the key, yeah, it's really, really good. So, um, and then, you know, those are the two commands that you can do to map the host folder to the one in Docker, okay? So please do that. Now, I'm gonna skip this because I've already done it, and instead, I'm gonna very briefly show you um, what the task, what the, what the API looks for um, the GWAS, and the GWAS runner, we call it the GWAS runner, it's, it's basically um, our fancy name for an API is very simple and you can actually write <coughs> straightforward programs that basically conform to a map reduce paradigm essentially to offload them on Golem. And it's not only Golem Unlimited but also Golem itself. Uh, we're actually we're almost there integrating the one rather with Golem so you'll be able to actually run everything that you do here in the tutorial in, in Golem network with virtually no change. Pretty soon because we're almost there. So the API is very simple, those are the functions that we need to fill in. And that's it. You basically just split, exec and merge. Um, exec and merge is like map reduce. So every, I'm pretty sure everybody knows this. Um, so with split, you basically split the input domain into a set of tasks that you want to distribute over, the, over our network. Then map, take, exec takes a task, does some computation on it, and then splits out the task result, and you can edit what you want. And then merge, collect all of them, and you get the final result. Okay, it's very simple. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody's done it before. It's just that this, you know this is uh, this, this is the simplest we can come up with. So let me show you how it works. Um, I'm going to prove to you that actually it is actually simple. Now, please tell me that you can see this, or is it too small? Anybody? Bigger. It's good. It's better. I can keep going. <laughs> is that okay? I mean, if I keep going, you're going to see it. Good. Okay, cool. um, so if so if when you open Docker you're gonna land with the Hello GWAS runner tutorial app. Uh, oh by the way, a disclaimer, we we're uh, Rust fanatics. Um, and if we really encourage you to use Rust as a No kidding, it's actually really cool. Um, in my in my humble thing actually better than Plus Plus. I used to go a lot with Plus Plus and this is so much easier. Um, so I, the examples are mostly in Rust, but there is a C++ example as well for the CD. Yeah, if you that that works, but thank you. Right? Um, so we've got, we've got Vem, pre-installed for you, Docker, we even have Nano. I can use it, I mean, I control it, but hey. So let's open it up. Now, I've got some stuff pre-prepared here. So um, this is basically the, um, the, 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 the that you need to have and it doesn't change from a use case to use case, okay? So we have split, exact, and merge, as I said. Now I've got some un un unfinished types here to make it more conformant to the, the presentation that I showed you. Now we've also got the dispatcher run, and this is essentially the glue 
that makes everything work. The DOS monitor and Golem Unlimited Golem. Um, I'm not going to go into details about what split context and arcs are, but if you have any questions about this, you can ask, you can ask them afterwards. You can, you can find more about this in the tutorial or our, uh, in our GitHub. Great. So, first of all, the problem we want to present to you like very simple way right? is essentially speaking um, a bit simple thing. In fact, so we have an array of 100 integers and we want to do a fancy sum on it. I know it's a, it's a stupid example, but you should do it call it a day. So basically, we're going to divide it into 10 arrays, 10 integers each, and then we're going to send um, each chunk to one of your machines. You guys can do the sum for us. You guys, you guys are going to send us the results back, and then we're going to put it back together. And it's great because it's so simple, we can actually do this one machine and put it by result. So a sunny test, if you will. Okay? So, um, so an array of integers, 64 bits, unsigned, I mean you can do whatever you want, but it just seems the simplest to go. And the result for each task is going to be one number, right? Because after we sum it, it's just one number. So in split, um, let's first say, so that's going to be the size of the chunk, and we're going to make it 10, we have 100 integers, so a size chunk of 10, so like can sense our arrays, perfect. Now, that's going to be the, um, the input array. So this is where we do the split. Um, now, if you have any questions about Rust, you can also ask. Hopefully, staff in the audience will be able to help you out if you get lost here. So I'm just going to create a vector of 100 integers assigned. The equal sign is basically an inclusive range in, in Rust. Um, output. Going to be our tasks, so that's going to be. Now I know this looks awful, actually. Um, we need the one, the one element apple, and that's because of Rust. I mean, no, I know not everything is great in Rust, but you know, technicality. Um, I think it's a small price to pay, but I mean, honestly, come on, it's not that bad. Um, so now for for chunk in array of chunks, and this is our size. Yeah, but look at this, right? I mean, there's so much simple in C++, you actually get chunks for free. So, and the task is going to be a task. And I'm going to make, uh, yeah, sorry, task. And that's essentially magic. Slice to a vector, right? From something that's been borrowed to own. Um, and we're going to put it in our uh, container here. Now, just to prove to you that it actually works, I'm going to print it out for you as well. As we, as we compile it, it should be visible. And that's us, right? I'm not going to fill in exactly here, but I need to put something there to compile it and shout it when I don't. I'm just going to spit out some junk. Um, I, I want to show you first that split works. So let me quickly recompile this for you. We got the warnings. We're going to get rid of them as we go on. Okay. Sorry, what's the thing with this one element tuples? Why do you need them? Um, that's a very good question. Can we can we get to that yeah. afterwards? Because it's, it's a bit of a technicality. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'll be happy to show it to you. Um, right. So um, we use a scripting for Watson. Um, we're going to be using Watson soon, but for the moment, it's just a very I mean, I know it's craft, but that's. That's the only thing we do with Docker, okay? So better with asking you, um, we set up all the repos so that you can, you know, you can do it as easy as possible. But nonetheless, I would like to tell you that this is a script in this. Okay, but it works. And it, we're going to get to Wazi soon. Um, so it's going to land here. Uh, I got it right. So um, it is hello, Wazi. Okay, so G was runner, um, just to show you. My Docker hangs. Why does it hang? Okay, okay. Yeah, hang on, hang on. Oh. 
thought, hey, that's a perfect example, like for example, to show you here. Um, this is exactly what we're going to do. Now, in Docker, if you go to main, you can see that we have the dispatcher here as well. Now, if you go into the Mandelbrot module, you're going to see that there is merge, there is exec, and there is some split. So I'm not going to go into the code, it's just too long. But um, if you want, if you've got any questions, I do advise you to do that, I recommend it for you, so just go ahead and, 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 and in your spare time, go ahead and have a look. Now we're going to um, just run it here. So with minus E, now you, know, you guys are actually going to help us. Um, so let's make it uh, open oh, me. Awesome. Yep. Let's make it play. Okay? Bit of a challenge, so I don't know, like 10,000 by 10,000 pixels, and make it, I don't know, like 40 staff tasks. Okay, so stuff is happening. Go away. <laughs>
and the headquarters are collecting data and our analysts are preparing a predictive algorithm to actually detect the trajectories and the impact date and time of those, of those uh, projectiles. Um, but we need your help, okay? We need your help to run the computation. Only, as I said, together we can track this, we can compute this, and we are literally right now waiting for the package with the data to arrive and be available. Who wants some? Are we ready? Yeah. Yeah, it is there. Yeah, I got it. Can you actually run it? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Uh, well, but there isn't enough of you. There's too few of you. Only a few of you managed to connect. So we need to do something about it. And we decided to use our so-called so -called decoy nodes. We have a number of undercover machines deployed on the syndicate's commercial cells. And we use them to feed misinformation to syndicate analytics, for example, in Cambridge. Um, and that was their only purpose until today. Today we're going to use them to save ourselves. We're going to use them to compute the trajectories of the missiles. But some of you may notice that they are not trusted. Has anyone of you heard the term FHE, the fully homomorphic encryption? Yes. Well, those of you who haven't, it is a concept that allows computing on encrypted data. So in a sense, we want to encrypt the data from the sensors, send them to the nodes, both trusted and untrusted, so your nodes will also be computing the encrypted data, to get the encrypted results and fetch them back and decrypt them on our side so that our computation is safe. So our analytics had prepared the um, prediction algorithm using FHE, and that's what we are going to be running today. Yeah. Okay, so um, just to clarify the experimental, um, we, we're not making any claims that are actually safe. Um, we found a very interesting paper and we implemented it, um, but there is some debate whether it actually works. As in, like, if you break it easy or not, so, you know, sticks and stones, I guess, you know, you know how it is, right? So, generate some points. Now, um, we're going to define it. So, so, those are the points that came from the headquarters, right? Um, Quite a bit of noise and we're going to try and regress. It's a very simple problem, but we're going to do it um, using um, fully homomorphic encryption. So we're actually going to encrypt it and then we're going to run it. So you're actually going to do stuff without knowing what you're going to do on your machines. Because everything is just going to be jumped through your radius. Um, it kind of, well, like FHE, in this case, it doesn't explore the CPU type, but it explores the memory. You know, you can't have everything, right? Um, full secrecy doesn't come without a cost. So, already got it. Um, so let's actually run that um, on your machines. Um, so this is an example app we call GU dot. Uh, it's in your uh, on your um, USB drives. Um, you can play with it as well. So um, all the code is there. You can have a look. Um, the fully open encryption library is called GMorph. It's on our uh, GitHub account as well. So have a look, play with it. Again, using the connection. That's very important to know. Right, so, uh, why is everything coming from the page? Right, so Ronald's going to run it for us. And let's do it. Right, so the back end is to you. And SAP tasks, let's say 40. Okay, the stuff is happening. Uh, let's browser, as we go. Okay, it's not pushing. I'm on the keyboard, but what? It's actually more work. Yay, hey, it makes it work. Yeah. Okay, so we got the results back. You can see the fit of model here. So the runner was actually doing a lot of stuff. It was actually encrypting the stuff, generating the keys randomly, then it was sending encrypted um, code junk to you guys. You were doing computation. <laughs> and this was our flight. Yeah, okay, hang on, hang on. We have flight, right? So, and then it was coming back to us, and then we flipped the model, and then we got it, you know, destroy the missile, we're going to all pack it. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we have it, so let's do the plot. Oh. 
Okay, now copy it out. G, now let's have a look. I'm doing my best. Okay. If you got if you're all gonna die, it's because of me. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's sue me later, right? So <laughs> right, so again, so those are the points that we had. Hey, this is where we go. Can you guys see this? I'm gonna zoom in a bit more. Yeah, so what, what, what does it show us? I mean it just refers to yeah, so we have time here, and uh, this is... No, we're past the time. <laughs> uh, okay, so we are going to die, that's okay. <laughs> just, send it, just send it to the headquarters again. Yeah. But well, we managed, right? So. Just send it, because we have a live view. Just send it. Yeah, just... <laughs> we're dead anyway. No, we're not yet. We're not dead yet. I mean, they are... They got the points now, yeah. Okay. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Good. What are you waiting for? I will ask them. We did our part. <laughs> hey! Good. Thanks, guys. We managed to survive thanks to you. Right. So that's, that's it. We managed to save the crypto resistance. We managed to save the free world. Thank you for that. Thank you for participating in our workshop. As I said, you can do all those things offline using the materials that we prepared. You have seen the setup of the Golden Unlimited cluster, which was fairly quick. I mean, some, most of you were new to it. You have seen software built and run on WebAssembly, with Rust, and on the Golden infrastructure. You've seen us running FHG experimental, simple case, but it is actually working, and you can see yourself, on WebAssembly, again, and on Golem. You have managed to save the free world. You're, you just off, barely. You're, just, you're off with the package of content package of examples, where you're off with the Easter egg for you to pick up and try to track. Go. <laughs> spread the word and um, bring the others. Let's meet at the Golden Stand. The great Thank you, guys.